happy Tuesday. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Engelbarts. If you are new here and we haven't met, if we have met, welcome back. If you are new, please subscribe. It just supports my channel. So does the thumbs up button. So I would really appreciate it if you would do that before we get started. I'll wait. Thanks. Okay, so today's episode is really really fun for me. I really enjoy party planning and I think it's almost to a fault. I truly find enjoyment in creating a theme for my children's birthday parties and then going to the extreme to make that theme come to life and create like this immersion experience into the theme, if you will. That's what I like to do. I like to spend time planning all of the details myself. I DIY a lot of the stuff that I end up creating, a lot of the decor I do myself, usually the cake I make myself, and that's the way I prefer it. I don't have a whole heck of a lot of time to do that, but I don't know, it gives me like a creative outlet to, I don't know, do something I enjoy. I printed off this handy dandy party planning sheet. It is the first time I've used something like this and I've I really enjoyed it. So I found this on the channel Beauty and the Beastins. She has her own blog website and this is a free like downloadable printable party planning paper and it really is simple but it helps just kind of categorize the different parts of a birthday party and it makes it to where you're less likely to forget something. So I went ahead and started filling that out. So I'm gonna show you just kind of the plans that I have for Eloise's party. I have not really done anything yet besides sort of get the plan together. We're gonna start with the theme of the party. I couldn't really settle on a theme. I knew that Eloise really likes food and I knew that she likes to be outside. So initially we were thinking we should do like a picnic type theme because that combines food and outside. I came across like when I was in Pinterest looking for ideas for a picnic themed birthday party for a one year old, automatically what came up was like one in a melon where it's like watermelon themed. I thought that was pretty cute. Something with a strawberry, berry cute or something. It's another just food themed party. Both of those were kind of ideas that we had but none of them really felt perfect. And then somebody suggested Actually, a lot of people suggested the Very Hungry Caterpillar theme, which is absolutely perfect. If you guys have not read the book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl, you're missing out. I'll leave a link for it below. Every kid should have that book. It's interactive. We have it in a board book and it's really fun. I remember reading it as a kid and it's just like a classic book. So that is going to be the theme of Eloise's first birthday party and it's perfect because she loves food. And it's about this caterpillar that eats a ton of food and then turns into a butterfly after he hibernates in his cocoon. So it, it really lends itself to a lot of fun decorations for a birthday party for a one-year-old. So I'm gonna run you through my birthday party list here and we're gonna talk about like each of the things that I, I'm planning for this party. So even the food is gonna be really fun because you can make it fit the theme so for the apps for this party, we're gonna do like a platter of fruits, cheeses, sausages, veggies, and then corresponding dips for each of those food items. So for the fruit, we're gonna have more of like a fruit dip, like a yogurt type fruit dip. And then we'll have other dips for everything else. We can do like a cream cheese with a jalapeno jelly on it and crackers and there should be something for everybody on that platter. We also have like a big butcher block that we can spread that out on and that will look really nice and we can arrange it in the shape of the caterpillar, kind of like in this picture here. So that will be what we're doing for the apps. For the main dish, Brad is really good at smoking meat and so I think we're gonna do both a pulled pork and a pulled chicken. I don't know, I guess I should have started with the number of guests. I don't know how many people will be coming because of COVID. So I know we'll have our immediate family, everybody that lives around in our neighborhood that we've been hanging out with. And if I had to guess, I would say maybe 15 to 20 people. There are a couple more family members up in Kansas City that are in the high risk category for COVID. And I was going to try my best to make this party as socially distanced as possible. So hopefully the weather will cooperate and we'll be able to do most everything outside. 
We also have a, a pretty large garage that is air conditioned. So if we need to do, you know, spread out into the main living area, the garage and the screen and porch so everybody can sort of have their own space, we can do that. So if I had to guess, I'd say maybe 20 people. We're not inviting a whole bunch of kids. It's not like Eloise has a lot of friends. So we will probably have our nanny and her four-year-old daughter there. She comes to our birthday parties. So I think that probably is gonna be the only like child that we have. With that said, um, main dish will be pulled pork and chicken. And then the sides, I was gonna try to go easier with the sides and do a potato salad, baked beans, and green beans. And I was thinking we would just buy potato salad and baked beans in the big containers, but now that I'm thinking about it, it would probably save a lot of money to buy canned green beans, or canned, yeah, green beans, and then just kind of boil them with beef bouillon and onions and do our own green beans, and then just get cans of baked beans and do that ourselves, just warm it up on the stove. And then I've never made potato salad, but it can't be that hard. And that's something I could easily make ahead and have ready and not have to do that the day of and worry about preparing that dish. So I think I will try to make my own potato salad as well and that will just save money on uh, the food and feeding a large group. For dessert, of course we will have birthday cake. Eloise is dairy free so I'm gonna be attempting to make a dairy free cake. I did find a bakery in Eldon that is it's only about 20 minutes away, but they can do dairy-free anything. And so for half a second, I thought maybe I'll just um, have them make the cake, but I think I will be fine making my own cake. And I found a really cute one. It's the shape of a caterpillar and you just make it in a butt cake. So I think that's the plan for the cake. I also saw a really cute round cake that you, you make uh, food with cut out holes, kind of like in the book with fondant. So I might, do a small cake like that for Eloise to like eat at her high chair. And then these cookies that I saw were really, really cute. And I might have the bakery do those because just like the, the I know they do cookies like that and the frosting situation on cookies, sugar cookies, are, I just feel like it's a little bit more difficult and tricky. I might do the cookies at the bakery and then make the cake myself. And then for drinks, I thought a fruit sangria would be really cute. So I have a big glass drink dispenser that I think I'll do a fruit sangria and I think it'll be really cute having all of the fruit floating in there and we'll just bring some color and add to the party. That brings me to decor. This is probably my favorite category. There are so many great ideas on Pinterest for decor for a very hungry caterpillar party. One that I thought was really cute is making a caterpillar on the wall out of just paper plates. So I could just get green paper plates at Dollar Tree and then a package of red ones and make this caterpillar with pictures. So I would have 12 circles and then a picture of Eloise in each of the circles for that month. So I'm planning on Eloise's outfit looking a lot like this. My mom has a ton of fabric. She has this giant craft room in her house. I'm actually in her kitchen right now if you didn't know that. Um, but she has a giant craft room with all kinds of fabrics to choose from and so we kind of went through and looked for fabrics that we thought would fit the Very Hungry Caterpillar theme and she had a ton. So for the caterpillar part of her shirt, we have all of these different green fabrics here and I think it'll be cute for like each section of the caterpillar to be a different fabric. This one is really cute too. That's like legitimately what the caterpillar looks like. So we'll make the caterpillar out of this and then she has some type of backing that you put on it where you can just iron it straight onto the shirt. And then for the caterpillar's head, we have a couple of different choices here. So I'm just deciding which one I want. And then his, his eyes are green and they have yellow behind them. So it will look something like this for his eyes on top of his head. And then he has these little antlers that are kind of purpley. So we pulled a couple of different purple fabrics and that will be really fun going through and just creating her shirt that she's gonna wear the day of. There's also um, a really cute picture of a baby wearing a tutu with all the different colors and I do have like tutu type, like tulle fabric. Fabric, is it fabric or is it just tulle? I have tulle that's rainbow colored from way back when I took the twins 
like two month picture. I had a big rainbow with tulle. So I think I'll use that to make her a tutu. And it's really easy, you just take a headband. So one of like the stretchy headbands that has a lot of holes in it, which I have a giant bag full of. So I'll use that and then you just tie the tulle around it to make a tutu. So she'll have her Very Hungry Caterpillar shirt and her tutu and probably some type of bow or something in her hair. And then we get to the high chair banner. So this I made for the twins and I had a lot of fun and it cost a lot of money because I ended up getting all kinds of intricate type fabrics and ropes and sequin fabrics and it was it ended up being expensive. So I probably will use things that we have on hand to make Eloise's because I know if I go into Joanne's, it's just gonna, I'm gonna go to town and it's gonna be ridiculous. This is my inspiration for her high chair banner and I think I will have a lot of fun making it even though I'm not gonna go spend $100 on unique type fabrics. I really like the, uh, the butterfly wings behind the high chair too. That probably looks like it's a little bit extra like tone it down a little bit, Rachel, but I don't think it would be that hard because we have cardboard boxes just sitting in our garage and I feel like if we just cut wings out of the cardboard and then paint it, which I could even have the twins help with, it would be a fun craft project and it would not be that difficult to achieve. So that is going to be her high chair. We also have this really great balloon arch that I know I'm gonna be using for all kinds of events. We just used it for our nephew's birthday and then uh, my brother-in-law's birthday was the very next day so we kept it up for that birthday. Our nanny's daughter is turning four next week so she's gonna be using the balloon arch for Nora's birthday and then we will of course use it for Eloise's birthday and what I envision is instead of just doing random colors on the balloon arch, I wanna do a caterpillar out of the balloon arch. So we'll see how that turns out but I think it'll be pretty pretty straightforward, pretty easy. So that has just a lot of impact um, in the room and that I think will look really cute. And then I have a little like blow up, balloon blow up air pump. It is a lifesaver. If you are blowing up any amount of balloons, this thing is seriously a lifesaver. You get so lightheaded blowing up balloons, especially when you're blowing up, I don't know, 30 of them. So this thing was really inexpensive on Amazon. I'll leave a link for it below. It even came with like happy birthday in those cute gold letters. They were kind of a rose gold. And then balloon glue, just these little sticky things to help stick the balloons to the walls. It came with that. It came with a package of balloons. It was just a really good deal. You can buy just the pump or you can buy the pump with all of those accessories. And I highly, highly recommend it if you ever blow up balloons for any type of event. I will leave those and the balloon arch linked below. I thought it would be really cute to do something like this where we have a caterpillar on a tree outside or like on the mailbox just to have some type of decor outside when you arrive to the house. And then the centerpiece going either down the middle of the table or down the island in our kitchen, I thought it would be really cute to do pots uh, for each day of the week, just one pot for each day of the week. They have really cute pots at Dollar Tree and then just put some greenery in it and stick a, a little sign in it that says on Monday she ate through whatever and then do that all the way down for each day of the week. That would just be a cute way to add height to the room and then kind of tie in the theme a little bit more. And then this tissue paper garland looks extremely simple and would add a lot of impact too so I thought it would be fun to do like above the, the sliding door to go out to the porch and then you sort of walk through it and it would just add a lot of color to the room. So that is what I've decided for the decor. Moving on on my paper here, we're now to the section called gifts. I have not decided what I wanna do for gifts yet. I really, really, really would like to just do contribute to the college fund and that's it because gifts get completely out of hand when you have three kids that are really small and they all have birthdays, Christmas, the twin's birthday is a week after Christmas, so right around that time of year we get this influx of toys and stuff, and it's just a lot. And so for a first birthday party, you really, like Eloise does not need that much. And so I have not decided yet what I wanna do for gifts. I wish I could do, like just buy her an experience, but now with COVID, it's not like you can even do anything anymore. And then for activities. So again, it's a first birthday party. We're not inviting a ton of kids, so I'm not stressing about having a lot of activities going on, 
But I do wanna do this idea where I have a new copy of The Very Hungry Caterpillar and everybody writes a note to Eloise in it somewhere and that's a keepsake for her. And then there were a few cute craft ideas like where you make links into a worm and I think that would be age appropriate for Baron Lindell and then Nora if she ends up coming. So there are just a couple, of, like a handful of crafts. One has like tissue paper where you put tissue paper on and make your caterpillar out of that. So that is what I have planned for activities. And then for goodie bags, I saw this idea where it's a little bug catcher which you can use over and over again. Like I think the kids would really enjoy catching lightning bugs in there. But it's a little bug catcher which I'm gonna have to pick up some of those. And then I was gonna put gummy worms and even some gummy butterflies in them. We have a local like sweets shop that has gummy butterflies. So I'm gonna pick up some of those and then fill up their little bug container with that. And I thought that would be really cute. Even like some edible grass or something would be cute if I could find edible grass. Hmm. So the last category is things I still need to purchase. I don't have a lot that I need to purchase. It's really just the plates I talked about earlier for the picture caterpillar, the ingredients for the cake if I do decide I'm gonna make that myself, maybe some fabric for the banner. I wanna do the burlap for her one in the middle, so I might just need to pick up some burlap. And then the pots that I'm gonna do the days of the week with the food stuck in it. So some pots with some greenery. And that's really it as far as what I need to purchase. And then the food, obviously, but that doesn't need to happen yet. That is Eloise's birthday party planning in a nutshell. I'm super, super excited. I'm so glad I, I had like a chunk of time finally to dedicate to this because I feel like randomly I've just been putting things in Pinterest and not really being able to dedicate time to planning it. So now that I have this paper filled out, I feel much more prepared for this and I'm starting to get really excited. Birthday parties, especially the first birthday party is, it's sad for me. Like it can get emotional thinking about her turning one and if I'm like not in a good mindset going into it, then I just get sad. So putting some excitement into it and having something to look forward to is really important. That is Eloise's first birthday party plans. I will take you through as I start executing these things. If you have not already liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and we will see you on Thursday.